In this video, we're going to cover Game Boy Advance simulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. The GBA remains one of my favorite handheld systems to date, and even though not much has changed in setting it up for Xbox Series X and S, I want to get these guides updated to the latest setup methods. So, here we are. Now, this setup guide is assuming you watched one of my new how to install RetroArch videos, be it retail or dev mode. If not, check out the RetroArch playlist in the description below, get set up, and then come back to this video for your GBA needs. But let's dive in. So the first thing to note about GBA emulation is that it no longer requires a BIOS file to function. That being said, there might be a game or two out there that don't work with the built-in BIOS files found within MGBA or other GBA emulators. And in that case, you will want to provide your own dumped Game Boy Advance BIOS file. And it needs to be named GBA underscore BIOS.bin. For anyone interested, I do have a Game Boy Advance BIOS dumping and game dumping tutorial on the channel. Link will be in the description below. But again, BIOS files are completely optional. Just want to make you aware that there might be a game or two that don't work with it. But if you want to use a GBA BIOS file, if you want to have that boot animation, you have a game that specifically doesn't work without it, once you have it sourced and it's named GBA BIOS.bin, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So if you moved your system folder to USB, just uh, plug your USB drive into your computing device, open it up, drag it right into the new system folder that you've created. And if you're relying on Durango FTP, you could get that booted up and start the file server. And then on your computing device, you can access your Xbox's file share that you just turned on. Local folder, RetroArch folder, local state, system folder, and drag the BIOS file right inside. All set. But now let's go ahead and talk about GBA games. There should only be one real file format these come in, and that is .gba. Of course, MGBA can play Game Boy Color and Game Boy games as well, but I specifically like to use a different emulator for those games in particular and just use MGBA for GBA games. Now, if you would like to save a little bit of space on your storage device, I mean, GBA games aren't that large, so it's not really necessary, but um, if you wanted to, you could compress all these games into zip format and save a little bit of space. So I'll have a link in the description below to this zip bat file you just saw me run. You do need to have 7-zip installed for it to work, but it will automatically compress your games and delete the original files. That way you just have a nice clean ROM folder after it's finished. And with that compression completed, I could delete the zip.bat file. And now I just need to place my games on my preferred storage medium. So, I am using USB. So I'm just going to open up my USB drive, open my games folder. And I'm going to drag all of my GBA games right inside. There we go. And if you are storing your games on the internal SSD through dev mode's S drive, you can just open back up your file share. Find your S drive, program files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder with the X64 at the end, games folder, and then just drag your Game Boy Advance games right inside. But once you have your game files placed and optionally that BIOS file, we're ready to move over to RetroArch. Now with RetroArch loaded and my USB drive back in place, I'm ready to begin loading up some GBA content. So one method of doing so, head down to load content, navigate to your storage device. So for dev mode users using USB, it should be under E, Retail users using USB, it should be under D. And then if you uh, installed them to the S drive through dev mode, they'll be S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch Folder, Games Folder. But find your Game Boy Advance Games Folder, choose a game, tell it to load up the archive, and then choose a core and tell it to run. I'm not personally a big fan of this method, so what I like to do instead is go down to Import Content and make a Games Playlist. So since my games are zipped up, I need to do a manual scan. Content directory, navigate to where your games are stored once again. System name, press right on the D-pad to go down to Nintendo and find Game Boy Advance. Default core, same thing, right on the D-pad to find Nintendo, find MGBA. Make sure scan recursively is on if you have your games separated into subfolders. And make sure Scan Inside Archives is turned on if you have your games compressed. And once those options are set, you can start the scan. And now I have a nice new Game Boy Advance playlist here on the left with all my games inside. And then I could just press A on a game and tell it to run. 
And since I placed that BIOS file, I'm greeted by the wonderful GBA boot animation. Otherwise, it would just boot straight into gameplay. And there we go, I can now enjoy my Game Boy Advance library on my Xbox Series X through RetroArch. But there's more to talk about when it comes to GBA emulation, so let's go ahead and get started. So heading into our RetroArch quick menu with the hotkey you set when you installed RetroArch, head down to the Options tab. Now our first uh, subcategory here is System, and inside you will see a Game Boy model. So this is set to auto detect, so it'll detect if you're trying to run Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance games on it. Auto detect should be good for most use cases, but if you need to manually set the system, this is where you do it. Next up, we have the use BIOS file if found. You can leave this one on, it'll just boot the uh, GBA's original BIOS file instead of using the HLE one. If you want to have the compatibility of the BIOS, but not have the intro show up every time you start a game, you can turn on skip BIOS intro here. Our next tab is video, and the first option is to choose the default Game Boy palette. We don't need to worry about this, we're not messing with Game Boy stuff in this tutorial. And the same thing with hardware preset Game Boy palettes, Super Game Boy borders. So the first real option we're interested in here is color correction. And this will let you choose between a Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Color's um, sort of washed out color palette found on the actual LCD displays of the systems. So it's a bit of an accuracy thing. If you want to have more vibrant colors, leave it off. But if you want to have uh, more accurate colors, you'll turn it on. And as you can see, it changes the color tone quite a bit. So personal preference on this one, I like to turn it on because I like the way Game Boy Advance games look on the handheld. And I want them to look like that when I play them on here. Next up, Interframe Blending. This tries to simulate LCD blurring that is found on original GBA hardware. Number of different options available here, but on Xbox Series X and S, you could go for the full-on accurate setting for the best results. Of course, not everyone will like this effect, so you will want to uh, decide for yourself if you want it on. Do know there are some games that depend on blurring for transparency effects. So, choose what works best for you. Next tab we have up is audio, and the first option is to enable a low-pass filter. This helps reduce the... I like how it says harshness of generated audio. But basically, it just makes it sound a little nicer. And then if you want to turn this on, you can choose the filtering level here. So personal preference here. Next up, input and auxiliary devices. Allow opposing directional input. This isn't really going to be that useful for us. But the next option, solar sensor level. This is for those of you that want to play the Boktai games. You can set the level of your solar sensor here to progress through the game as needed. Next up, Game Boy Player Rumble. So when the Game Boy Player came out, it was actually able to use the GameCube's controller rumbling for certain games that supported it. So if you want to have that feature on your emulated games, you can turn it on here. It may cause some unintended results, so do be aware of that. Our next tab, Performance. Idle Loop Remove. You can leave this on Remove Known. There's really no problem leaving it on that. And we're going to skip all the frame skip stuff because we're on Xbox and we don't need it. The Xbox Series X and S are more than powerful enough to do GBA. And that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned. If there's some options you want set for some games but not others, such as interframe blending, you could go up to the manage core options here and save them as a game options file. So that way that game has those specific options set but not others. Now one last thing I want to cover here real quick before calling this video is shaders. The Game Boy Advance has some wonderful handheld borders available within RetroArch and it's really fun to use them. So heading into the shaders tab, make sure they're turned on if they're not already, and head over to the load option here. And then inside the shaders folder, you'll find a handheld folder, console border folder, and if you scroll down, you will see a GBA scaling option here. There's also another one here of color correction and motion blur, so if you are using the color correction and motion blur options within the core itself, do not use these ones. You'll get a double effect and it's just trippy so if you want just the console border and to use the core for the color correction and motion blur just choose one of these uh scaling borders here but loading up into the shader you can see that it just has this awesome gba border around it and the size of the border is going to depend on your display so this is the 5x border i just applied here it's a little too small so i'm just gonna head back in and I'm going to apply the 6x filter instead. And as you can see, we get 
an awesome simulated GBA screen. It's a little bit darker because of the grid lines, but overall looking pretty awesome. Except that you can tell that there is a bit of cropping on the left and right side of the screens. That's because the GBA has an aspect ratio of 3 by 2 So on my 16 by 9 display with integer scaling on and core provided aspect ratio, it doesn't show the full sides of the borders. So if you want to reduce that cropping, you could go into your quick menu, back out, head up to settings, video, head down to scaling, and we could change the aspect ratio from core provided to whatever our monitor's aspect ratio is. So in my case, 16 by 9. But there's still some clipping here, so if I turn off integer scaling, that would remove that as well to give me just the full frame effect. Now do know if you are messing with the video settings to get your border to show up correctly, head back into your quick menu, head to the overrides tab, and save them as a core override so that way these settings don't mess with other cores. Another thing to note about shaders, you can head into the shader parameters and adjust some settings to try to make them a little more optimal for your taste. So in this case, I removed motion blur since I already have interframe blending turned on in the emulator core itself. I reduced the screen darkness, reduced the grid strength just a tad, and it just makes the overall experience just a little bit better. But once you have your shader set the way you want, you can head back into the shader tab, click on the save button here, and you can save them as a core preset or a specific game preset, depending on how you want your games to appear when you first load them up for that whole core. But that's going to do it for GBA emulation on the Xbox Series X and S. Great way to experience your GBA library. Unfortunately, things like link cable support still aren't a thing. Hopefully one day. But thank you for making it through this tutorial. Really appreciate each and every one of you for spending even a minute in the channel and helping us grow it. That being said, I do have a couple more favors to ask of you here at the end. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button, notification bell, so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. Really helps us keep it growing and bringing this stuff to you. If you're further interested in helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping us going, and we're super grateful to all of our champions that have been supporting us. Y'all make it happen. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.